<laughs> and guess what guys? Yes, another video here from the off grid garage. This time with a very special video. Uh, I've said this before, I think, and it wasn't so special. No guys, really, today I need your help. I've got some questions I cannot find answers to, and I think you guys can provide me a solution. But before we start with today's show, I want to show you something here. Um, this morning I got a delivery from a Victron MPPT charge controller here and also the Victron Smart Shunt 500. I've connected them to our lithium battery here on the workbench and as well as the charge controller is connected to the same terminals as our JNGE MPPT controller. And if you have seen the last video, this one always showed 0.3 volts too low. And the battery voltage is already 0.3 volt higher than this controller thinks. So eventually it overcharges your battery. And I just want to show you what all the other devices are measuring on this battery. So we are starting with our cheapest one, the $11 cell meter 8. 13.27 directly here at the terminals there's no load and there's no solar coming in nothing this is just pure battery voltage nothing else the smart shunt doesn't have a display so we go into the app 13.29 and we go quickly into the mppt charge controller i haven't set anything up they are just connected and measuring the voltage 13.27 we have so exactly the same as the cell meter and now we try the Unity and we measure 13.27 volt, the same. And now we take the 20 year old Conrad electronic multimeter I bought in the 80s. Hey, that's not a joke. I really bought this in the 80s. It's actually 30 years old, but it still measures 13.30 volt. Okay, all these devices are in the same ballpark now, 30 millivolt difference in voltage measurement and this one has 300 millivolt difference. So guess which one is wrong. So these guys should really spend another 24 cents and buy a reliable voltage measuring circuit and then charge the customer $5 more. But 0.3 volt is unacceptable. Well, well, now that we have finalized building our stationary battery box here and made it mobile, we can actually start building the battery now, right? Uh, wrong, because um, just look behind you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Look at all this gear here. Well, apart from the AGM battery. Look at all this gear. This is all the stuff which needs to go in the box as well. Well, at least I want to place all this in the box. So, what do we have? We have a Victron Smart Shunt. We have a 200 amp DC circuit breaker and switch. We have a 100 amp fuse with pure golden contacts. We have a high quality 300 amp DC switch. And we've got the 200 amp QUCC BMS. And this all needs to go inside this box here. And well, and this is exactly my question now. In which order should I connect all these bits and pieces? Okay, so at the moment, I'm not sure if I should use the fuse or the breaker. I ordered this one a while back and it looks a bit flimsy, actually. I'm not sure if I should use this. Has anyone experience with these ones? Are they, do they work? 200 amp seems to be a lot anyway. So I ordered the fuse here, 100 amp golden contacts. And this one looks like a really good quality product. I like the cover. I like the, the studs here. This is M8. This is all gold plated, or at least it looks like. And it, this looks like a really good quality fuse. And I'm totally happy to use a 100 amp fuse. So 100 amps on a 50 volt battery voltage times amps gives you 5000 watts 
This fuse will only trigger, will only melt if we pull more than 5000 watts. And I have ordered a 3 kilowatt inverter. This is all I'm taking from this battery. 3 kilowatt is 64, 65 amps around. This is the maximum I will pull from this battery. Hence the idea with a 100 amp fuse. You know, this all fits together nicely. I want to mount a switch on the outside of the box here so I can just turn off the whole battery with one go in case of an emergency or in case of maintenance. I can just turn it off and I've disconnected the whole DC. So this one is not cheap. They cost like $43 or so. But really high marine grade quality, not a cheap one from AliExpress. Link is down below. Blue, blue C. And then we've got the QUCC BMS 200 amps. So I, what I don't understand now is, see, we've got our battery. Let's pretend this is our lithium iron phosphate battery. The manual of the BMS says this cable here needs to be connected to B minus. So this one needs to go to the negative side of the of the battery, right? And then you connect this one to the negative side of your inverter and the charge controller. All good. This Victron Smart Shunt actually claims the same. To battery minus. This one needs to be connected to battery minus as well, but not in parallel to this one. They... Uh, so do I connect it from the battery negative to the Smart Shunt and then the BMS to the smart shunt, so the smart shunt measures also the losses in here. Or is this the other way around? Do I need to connect this one to negative and then go with the smart shunt over here and then connect my inverter to the smart shunt? Is it this order? And what about the fuse? Where is the fuse going? Is this going into the positive side of things or is this going in between here? You know, should I not protect the battery first with a fuse or a breaker? Well, this switch is not as critical because this can sit in the circuit anywhere. So I'm not 100% sure about this whole setup now. What do you think? How do I set this up correctly? I am, at the moment, I'm tending to use the smart shunt first, then use the BMS. Let's put it this way. Have the fuse connected to our main positive, then have a switch. And then go from here. Ah, damn it. So I'm going for the positive into the fuse, going from the fuse in the switch, coming out of the switch, going all the way to our inverter. And of course, we've got the negative here going to our BMS. So is this how I should cable it? Or do I need to flip these two? Does the fuse go on the negative side as well? Does everything go in the negative side? The switch and the fuse? Everything in series connection in the negative side? What do you think? What's the best way? What's the correct way? Is there a correct way? I googled a little bit and I couldn't really find... I don't think there's a standard or something or a, or a correct answer. It is more like people, some people don't use even fuses or something or circuit breakers. They just use the bare batteries without any any protection gear in between. But I'm not a fan of that, really. I'm not. So I would like to have the fuse and the switch. This all connected to the box. And the shunt and the BMS. And then the plan is to have only two cables coming out of this box, positive and negative and they go into our switchboard enclosure here at the wall. I have to take this paint off again before it settles. The last time I got in real trouble with Mrs. Andy. And we certainly don't want that again.